Hi everybody, welcome back to Ox Talks. It is November 13th, 2023. It's a Monday. Hope you all had a good weekend. I'm back in the office today, meeting with some clients, returning uh, calls and emails. And again, you know, running my business. Uh, if you all have your business to run, uh, look, be thankful. If you're not running your own business, consider trying to find a way to start your own business. Uh, we are heading into a period of time that I think it's going to be crucial to not be reliant on an employer. Try to make yourself financially independent as possible. Obviously, having your own business if, or a side gig is important for that. Obviously, reducing your reliance on credit cards and debt is important to that. We talk about uh, paying down debt and, and being very careful incurring debt right now in these very uncertain times. Obviously, you know, not the least of which you're paying, you know, much higher percentage rates to service that debt. If you're liking the channel, everybody, I really appreciate you being here. Consider subscribing and uh, like and share these videos with your family and friends. You know, I didn't, I've been sitting back watching this unfold for a long time now. I went through 08, uh, that crash. I, I had some, some, some bumps in the road myself, which I'll address on, on future videos. Uh, but look, you know, it, it took me many, many years to believe that I had sufficient knowledge base to share with you guys, sufficient experience to share with you guys, and a sufficient level of my own preparedness to be able to share with all of you to hopefully make a difference. So every day I'm going to come out and try to put up, you know, 10 or 15 minutes, not just sharing, you know, the current events of the day and warning you about the collapse, which I think in the coming months and, and year or years ahead, I'll have plenty of uh, daily uh, articles and data to share and unfortunately we're going to see a lot of people get very hurt in this next downturn that's unfolding right before our eyes now but I you know I, I just felt in my heart that in the last month or two it made it made sense to start the channel and to bring this knowledge and preparation and experience to the forefront and hopefully provide you guys a unique insight into how you can hopefully, you know, maybe not make the same mistakes I made, maybe not make the same mistakes that you have made in the past or you've seen others in your family uh, make, which has been financially devastating. So the, 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 the goal of this channel is to warn you and help you to prepare, but also to uplift, uplift you and to give you a positive message, to give you uh, hope and, and solutions uh, to implement in your daily lives, to move forward and to be more resilient, not only in terms of financial resilience, but in terms of your physical fitness and your health as well. So with that being said, what what I what what triggered today's little topic was an article I saw in the Daily Hoddle. I know this story was reported a few days ago about uh, hackers hitting the world's largest bank, forcing financial giant to rely on USB stick to settle trades. And it says engineers are investigating how hackers managed to crack the New York arm of the Industrial and Commercial Bank of China, the ICBC. And it says, without naming names, Bloomberg says banking leaders admit the hack highlights fears that a system-wide attack could one day bring the traditional financial system to a halt. It says the incident spotlights a danger that bank leaders concede keeps them up at night the prospect of a cyber attack that could someday cripple a key piece of the financial system setting off a cascade of disruptions it says the 2023 survey uh, revealed that the rate of ransomware attacks and financial services continues to rise it went up from 55% in 2022 to 64% in this year's study, which was almost double the 34% reported by the sector in the 2020-21 report. So although the sector experienced an increased attack rate, it was below the cross-sector average of 66%. The point is, 
uh, is that we this stuff is on the rise and in this case thankfully it didn't lead to a shutdown of the financial sector but as these as this article is warning that very well could happen in the future and it doesn't even take a cyber attack you know it could be uh even a, a local weather event t to you that shuts down you know your bank your local bank or your regional bank uh, it could be any host of factors that prevents you from getting money out of the bank and look if you have all of your money in a bank or even in banks I would suggest that you consider having the ability to access some cash uh, if you were unable to go to your ATM. Uh, maybe your ATM gets shut down. Uh, maybe the bank gets shut down. Maybe your access to your ATM uh, is, is cut off because there is an unforeseen weather event or an unforeseen uh, natural disaster like an earthquake or something like that. All of these things you need to give some thought to it. It's like having insurance. You cannot solve these problems a second after the event happens. You have to have a plan in place before it happens. It doesn't mean have a bunch of cash, it means have some cash maybe. Have the ability to uh, buy some items if you needed to. Uh, have some ability to purchase some fuel if you needed to, or some extra food if you needed to. Uh, so keep that in mind. Most people, you know, if you look in your wallet right now, how many of you actually have 15, 20, 40, 50, 60, 100 dollars in your in your wallet uh, in smaller bills or medium sized bills that you can go and readily pay for something with? Or are you relying totally on your iPhone with your Apple Pay? to swipe or you're relying totally on a debit card or a credit card you know you know i'm in a restaurant uh, you know restaurant places now and everyone's paying with a credit card obviously you know it makes sense if everything is up and running but do you have that backup plan and have you have you thought it through and prepared for it and when we say prepare you know there are so many different elements that go into that you can't have it all at once you can't you know snap your finger and and, and automatically have all of these categories and items covered but you have to start somewhere i started i think in about 2011 2012 you start thinking about okay what if i need some emergency food what do i have beyond a couple of days of food in the refrigerator or the cabinet and you have to start with the, you know working your way through the process, having some backup canned goods for immediate use, going from there to possibly having some some backup bulk foods. You hear about all the time, you know, rice and beans. Assuming you have a way to cook all this stuff, guys. I mean, if the power goes down and you know uh, you don't have the ability to, to turn on the stove, what is your uh, what? Is, how are you going to prepare your food? How are you going to boil water? whole nother topic but very important you give some thought to make a checklist start going through these things methodically and start small obviously all this stuff takes money you have to start somewhere but on, on a on a very basic level maybe consider starting having some cash consider having a copy of your id and maybe your passport uh you know and maybe some personal information you know with you uh in in case you know your wallet's lost or you don't have that stuff consider having us uh, you know a, uh, a a get home bag in the back of your car that simply has some of that cash maybe copies of identification uh, a pair of walking shoes uh, maybe some source of security if, if you can have it. Uh, obviously, if we're talking about certain security items, you have to be licensed and legally able to have those in your state. So please, please make sure you're abiding by the law. Uh, but I think I did a show on Jeremiah's channel a couple of years ago about my get home bag. You know, and I planned that for, for the, all of our vehicles for the family. Uh, and then you go from the get home bag to a three day bag. Uh, and that's a little more stuff. If you're out of town for a weekend, you know, do you have some additional supplies? So I know I'm rambling a bit here, but you know, we need to keep focus on what's important. It's easy to get caught up in the daily stories about the consumers, you know, crashing and how real estate's crashing and how there's gonna be all these great opportunities. And I, I concur, I believe there will be great opportunities uh, if you're able to take advantage of those in the coming months and years. However, on a more basic level, 
it comes down to being able to feed your family, support your family, um, keep your family and you safe. And so those are all items that we have to start working on as soon as possible. I will do future videos breaking down what, what I have done. Obviously, that's just one person's input. Uh, but, you know, I believe that the categories that you need to cover are obviously, they're, they're, they're wide. You need to think about your, you know, your um, medical supplies. Do you have some medical stuff? Do you have a way to dress wounds? Do you have uh, some backup antibiotics, you know, in case something should happen? Again, access to medical care could also be cut off in the event of an unforeseen circumstance. So you're not always going to want to, if you have the ability, folks, to jump in your car and head down the street to the 7-Eleven, even if it's open, or head down the street to your ATM, even if it's open. If there are other things going on in society or in your local area, you, you know, you're probably best to minimize your exposure and to hunker down. And so, you know, it, we talk about your home being your castle. Are you able to cover all your bases with what you have uh, stored up or saved up or supplied up, you know, at your property? Uh, you know, we're talking about people jumping in the car and bugging out. Well, you know, there's, look into that. There's a lot of reasons why that is the worst, uh, worst scenario is jumping in the car and hitting the road. So. I didn't mean to turn this into a, a prepper per se video, but I wanted to address that because fundamentally at my core, that's the reason why I started taking a lot of steps back, you know, many, many years ago. And hopefully, you know, many of you already have, are doing that. If you're not, give it some thought. Uh, again, you'll sleep better at night. There's no downside to having some preparations uh, put aside for you and your family. Uh, dealing just on a, on a very basic level with having some additional cash and some ability to make some purchases if you had to, if you don't have your debit card and credit card. Let's talk briefly about the consumer again. CNBC put an article out uh, that they took some data with a, a new CNBC NRF retail monitor tracking card transactions. It says the new retail monitor debuted today is a joint product of CNBC and the National Retail Federation based on data from Affinity Solutions, a leading consumer purchase insights company. It says the data is sourced from more than 9 billion annual credit and debit card transactions collected and anonymized by, excuse me, Affinity and accounting for more than $500 billion in sales. It says the cards are issued by more than 1,400 financial institutions. And what, it, what they found, no surprise, is the consumer took, and they say, a spending break ahead of the holiday season with October retail sales, excluding autos and gas, falling by 0.08% and core retail, which also removes restaurants, declining by 0.03% according to this new retail monitor. Do you believe that the consumers are simply taking a spending break in advance of the holidays, or are the consumers simply breaking? Uh, I, you know, again, the, the spin is amazing on these kind of things. And, and likewise, why do these, uh, polls and why does this data exclude big items uh, like auto and fuel and restaurants you know they always exclude the big items they well it only fell 0.8 percent well look if you put that stuff back into the mix which are the obviously the important part for most of us on a daily basis you know the the uh those sales have probably uh, gotten hit even harder. And, and obviously we know the consumer is struggling to, uh, to pay for these items. The last article was, again, on the trucking industry. It is literally collapsing. Uh, we, I reported on that, and you've seen a bunch of articles on that in the last uh, couple of weeks. It's a bellwether, folks, in terms of what's going on with the economy. Uh, the consumers aren't buying, the retailers aren't ordering, and the trucks aren't getting the shipments. And it says America's, this is uh, from Fox Business, America's trucking industry is in dire states, which is bad news for the American economy because it serves as an indicator of the mood of consumers and their pocketbooks heading into the holiday season, one expert warned.
Everyone's calling this the great trucking recession. And it's true because all the trucking companies right now are in dark times, it says. This is not a good time to be in the trucking industry. Uh, it's obviously it says this, the engine that drives the American economy forward. Uh, and when it breaks down or stops, it's like a heartbeat, it says. When that ceases to be, it brings the entire economic system to a halt. We've heard about the layoffs from, uh, from Yellow uh, Corporation. We've heard about the shutting down from Convoy Inc. So big, big, big companies have been shuttering and laying, laying off people in the trucking sector. And it says, the prices of everything, including energy and food, as we know, have skyrocketed. Consumers are buying less and truckers are fighting over freight to make some profit or break even to survive another year, he said. So let's keep watch on this. The markets again today were flat. I don't know how in the heck the markets weren't down big on last week's a downgrade of the U.S. credit rating by Moody's. Uh, the markets seem to be immune to this. They're operating on a different wavelength, a different track from you and I, um, you know, on you know, uh, in in, uh, in Main Street here. So I hope this was helpful. I know it was a, a bit of a uh, uh, a rant about the preparations. And again, I'll have to break each of those items down in future shows. If, if that's something you guys want to see, let me know. It would just obviously be my input on what I'm doing and what I have done in terms of uh, preparations, but it might be helpful. Don't get overwhelmed by this stuff. Just take the information in, process it, and start making notes about you know, where you can improve, what you can do to change your situation, to plan for an unforeseen event. I and mean, obviously, from one side of the spectrum being a, a major cyber attack, to maybe just you know, a bad storm in your area where you need to be self-sufficient uh, for a few days, you know, and be able to not only you know, have food for the family, I'll be able to have be able to purchase some items, but also have some uh, ways to protect, you know, your household, protect your family. So, with that being said, I'll leave it there for today. It went a little long. I apologize. Please get your fitness in today. Get your workout in. I'm going to go do my workout here in a couple of hours. Uh, get the steps in. Do some strength training, and I'll see all of you tomorrow. Bye.